Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to the epic conclusion of Willow Week that has now become Willow Two Weeks because he's Willow's duality and with a duality you have to do Willow Week in two weeks apparently. So, uh, let's go ahead and introduce our players. Uh, it's a 4v4 going down on Adaptive Sin. I do love me some Adaptive Sinful Nature, but Team 1 up at the top, Team 2 down at the bottom. Starting with our Cyan player, we've got the Mighty Gorgon who's going UEF opening first land to his south. Oops, bad camera movement, rookie caster. We've got at at eight, who is actually in the last one uh, that we did with Willow, also going UEF first land. Next, we've got Nobber Vosser, and I'm hoping that's supposed to be said with the German accent, but he's going UEF opening first land. And an entirely UEF team today, got the Wonga, who's going UEF opening first land as well. And shifting to team number two, we have got Captain Jerk who's going Cybern opening first lane. He can't be too much of a jerk if he's going Cybern. Next, we've got Hair. I'm not going to try. Hair something or other. He's going Seraphim opening first land. The man himself going Aeon. I'm throwing up in my mouth as we speak. Femboy Willow going Aeon first and second land. And last but not least, we have got Zigster, who's going Cybern opening first land. And for the conclusion of Willow Week, Willow Two Weeks, I'm actually joined by the man himself. Willow, would you like to say hello? Hello there, you beautiful people. My name, of course, as he said, is Willow. This is all about me. So I don't know. I'm not that I'm not narcissistic enough to come up with like a monologue there. Uh, so, yeah, Adaptive Sin. I played this match a long time ago because <laughs> I don't play enough for you to get replays that are current. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a couple months old. It's an interesting map. I see people try to do Navy on this map. I don't think Navy is that good. I don't know. What do you think? I think if you're Cybran, you can maybe warrant it with Salem's, or if you're Aeon and you're really wanting to get some damage done, Torrents can work, but it's a very slow payoff compared to just winning land, and it's very expensive. Uh, and another thing I want to point out, because I saw it in the comments, and I did, I think, reply to a few of them, I asked Duelist to be harsh. He, 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 was, he was being overly critical. I don't think he would have done that if I didn't tell him he can be as harsh as he wants to be. Uh, it's all in good. It's all in good fun. Me and Duelist are good friends. There's no beef. I have him held hostage right now, and I'm making him say that. By the way, so the gun is so big. The gun is so big. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but uh, lots of reclaim as well on this map. And contrary to because this is Willow Week, uh, a lot of the casts we do together turn into podcasts. So I'm gonna try and stay focused on the game instead of talking about a bunch of other shit. So obviously, Katawunga is okay. I was actually just seeing that. I think he's actually talking about somebody, but he's using a mixture of German and English. So I don't know if he's actually German or not, but everybody's expanding out. There's a lot of reclaim on this map. We can zoom out and take a quick look. Uh, you can see lots of little clumps of rocks and trees, as well as these yep. neutral buildings that are in the middle. 42.7 thousand reclaim on the map currently. What was that tool called? Thernus actually dropped it in the comments of one of my last videos that is like the new reclaim info tool. It's the worst for casting because you have, you know how the eco bar is always closed. You have to open that and then control shift to see it. But it's like, re, it's like reclaim info counter or reclaim counter, something like that. I'll, I'll find it after this and send you it. Okay, I'll have to go grab that before the next one. But first couple of, well, I was going to say commander contact, but it's actually just two teammates that are brutally murdering some civilians here in the middle of the map. Uh, who cares about civilians? They're uh, collateral damage as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, well, it's a German and a Russian. So I guess if there were going to be any two, any two nations that would brutally murder civilians based on their history. I mean, if, if, if you're talking current... Russia and America kind of take that. I don't think Germany has had a little bit between it and killing civilians. Surprisingly, <laughs> it's had like almost a hundred years. Nice uh, that's record. a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. And that's a diss to myself, by the way, because I'm German. So if anybody is offended by that, you can kiss my ass because oh. I insulted myself as well. Yeah. Uh, you want to know my my grandparents, uh, my grandparents last name? Uh, it's, sure. Uh, it's Colton Backer. Love I'm it. very German. <laughs> Love it. 
Uh, but you're grabbing some of the neutral reclaim as well. You're doing the standard willow thing, which is lots of T1. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven land factories. Why do you uh, go so heavy tech one land? Okay, so the main reason behind some of these factories is at least two of them are just for engineers and reclaim on this map. You can see how many engineers I have on this map in particular. The reason I go five land factories, which you said was too much in the other cast, is generally I'm of the mindset of have it and not need it, over need it and not have it. I've had games where I try and greed and go for three and on three or four land factories, and then I get run over in the land because mostly because I play Aeon and I forget my units for 10 seconds and then they're gone. So, you know, it, it's just, it's kind of just security. I know that it's not necessarily super efficient, but having a lot of land units has saved me more often than not. Gotcha. And there, there is actually a pretty important feature on this map that I forgot to highlight, but there are these uh, jammer crystals that are in the middle as well, which will pop up with all these radar signatures. So you can see players starting to destroy those. But if you're not familiar with this map, you can like load in, walk your commander forward and think, holy shit, the guy on the other side is smurfing. He's got a shitload of units already. I'm surprised nobody has yelled at you in the comments about having um, always render strategic icons on because people yelled at me for a long time and I finally gave in. Uh, I turned it off. The mod? The strategic icons uh, mod? No, 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 no. Uh, always render icons is an interface option, and it will always render the unit icons no matter how much you zoom in. Uh, I do not have that on. Yeah. Uh, it, people kept on asking for it, and I turned it on, and nobody seems to care if it is on, so. Oh. I, I'm just surprised nobody asked you to do it. Oh, you're surprised nobody asked me to turn it on. I thought you said you were surprised that people didn't ask me to turn it off. Oh, yeah, no, everybody wanted me to turn it on because they're like, I can't tell what units are shooting each other when you zoom in. Ah, uh, I gotcha. No, everybody hated whenever I had the Strategic Icons mod. Well, not everybody, but the majority one, I put out a poll. Yeah. Uh, have you tried Eternal Strategic Icons, by the way? It's really good. It's the one I use. Um, it's, it, it's, uh, you have a different one, but it highlights like anti-nukes, TMD, TMLs and uh, gives a different icon to SCUs. Uh, I think I have, I have Penguin's mod and then something that highlights something else. All right, well, enough podcasting, let's get into it. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, I went for a lot of land factories and I'm teching up to tech too. I really like the Aeon T2 land and I also at some point was like, oh wait, nobody's going for T3 air. And I think that also Zigster noticed that and we both went for T3, T2 air at the same time. I see so that. that's were what I'm doing right now. Were you all on comms for this? No, I was, uh, I was queuing solo for this. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, you're going for tech three air. You got some power queued up. Uh, interesting land push here. Um, are you trying to just secure reclaim with this? Like, what are you trying to do here? Yeah, I, I was trying to secure reclaim and I was, and I, I think I threw a scout over or I had enough radar to determine that I thought I could win the fight as long as my commander walked over afterwards. Um, and I, I really wanted this reclaim field. I think I might've overcommitted a bit, but I think I'm gonna get the, the majority of the reclaim field since most of the fighting happened over here. And those engineers are gonna have to push forward. Uh, you look pretty dead here to me. I think your last engineer's about to die. Uh, I, I, I was gonna, I, I, I'm a little bit ahead. I'm gonna slow down for this. Uh, oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I get the commander in there and do most of the reclaim with the commander. Okay, that was the plan. Because you were like, I think it was okay. And I was like, yeah, all your units are dying there, bud. But very good, getting the commander in there and taking out a lot of tech one there from at at eight. It was your teammate in the last cast. But both of you are going for... Yeah. Everybody's going for really heavy tech one land spam, actually, this game. Yeah, that. This, so if I had gone for the lighter, more greedy spam, I, I just wouldn't have had the units. I would have gotten rolled over. I, uh, think, you... I think I I think the biggest mistake I've made right here is I went with... I, I sent too many factories to T2 too quickly because over here to the east, 
you're gonna see me with a bunch of units coming out from Cyan, and I just don't really have the critical mass of units to stop it. So, it's a bit of a problem. Yeah, you have, like, no units. Well, some of them are coming off now, but you upgraded all of your land factories, I think, at the same time. Yeah, I, I've done that a few times, and I'm trying to stop doing that. Almost I had I had time. two that were still producing T1 land units, and I still have those two doing that, even after getting the T2 land factories. Gotcha. Well, luckily, Cyan didn't go for you. He decided to go for your buddy. Uh, so Zigster's dropping some point defense now, but between that and the T1, he should be okay. And now you're in a pretty good spot to potentially do some damage with Tech 2. Um, it is almost 10 minutes into the game. You haven't gone for Gun or Tech 2. Uh, did you forget? Did you not want to? Oh, you might be about to do it actually right now. <laughs> um, I... No, I don't know why. Oh, I I think my eco might have been messed up for a second. I might have been getting too much reclaim, and they were on an attack move, so they assisted the comm, which was damaged. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I, I didn't go for gun or T2, I think mostly because I just felt I didn't need it. Um, I, I could see in hindsight, like, maybe it, it would have been a good idea. I was more focused on just getting solid T2 land production up, and then I wanted to get my comm off the front. Yeah, that's true. And I know that before uh, before we started recording, um, you were saying that you were saying that you've been staying alive in a lot more games because you've been a lot more cautious with your commander instead of going for because you you used to religiously go for the chrono upgrade, like every game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I had to build that on literally any map I could get Chrono in seven minutes. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, and it's still a good build. It's just, it requires, you don't have any units if you do that build. And I had another one that was a bit slower and a bit more reasonable, of course. But uh, I just, I, I think I'm, I'm getting more value out of trying to play the T2 land phase heavily. And that's why you can see, I'm pretty sure I've invested more into T2 land than anybody on the map right now. And it's resulting in us. Well, the main result here is orange just had way more units. But oh yeah, and you guys I, got a nice shift G here on Nabarvas. Are going to bring him down? Yeah. Ooh, nice vet though. Well, just kind of staves off the inevitable. And then I was I noticing mean, that... also on the western side of the map, your buddy Yellow is kind of taking apart Katawonga. Yeah, he's, uh, he's doing very, very well for himself. But Catawonga does get that second base, which means he'll have a little bit more eco to try and throw at this uh, this land problem. And it's not like there's so many mantis in there they are going to get, like, massive economic damage done. He's just going to lose a little bit of map control. But that's, that's kind of just throwing out some NGs to rebuild those mexes, and you're good. Okay, so question for you. Um, and I, I think I know the answer to it, but... For people that um, might not read the comments uh, on some of my videos or people that might be newer to the game or seeing my channel for the first time, if that's you, hello, welcome. But you've got both Obsidians and Blazes out. If you could explain to the viewers uh, when it is appropriate to build one and not the other. So Blazes are generally better on for land purposes um, for navy purposes it's kind of obvious when you should have blazes but for land purposes blazes are better if you need something to get there quick but you don't need it to be that great because the blaze individually isn't that great and the obsidian is really really good if you want a unit that just mows through t1 and lets you push consistently so these obsidians um, the thought with those is they're going to stay with the asylums with the flag stay protected and the blazes I was planning to do some more raiding, but I think I just didn't get around to it this game I like to mix in blazes So I have a force where I can just like control click on blazes Select them throw them to somewhere and just get some raiding off I think it also helps you just keep your overall numbers up because the obsidian just takes so long to build but once you get a critical mass of obsidians, you just you just see here, everything just gets immediately annihilated because they one-shot all T1 units. So, and the obsidian is just really strong into T2, and even if they get to T3, it, it'll kill a brick, it'll kill a Percival, it'll kill loyalists and titans, um, of course, mass efficiently, because T2 trades really mass efficiently with uh, T3, but I find 
it's um they're just really strong units they're they're kind of the main assault unit if you want to have a large land attack i'd rather have obsidians personally uh even mass for mass over blazes uh but if you want to move around the map quickly if you need mobility the blaze is your bread and be bread and butter there all right blaze fast assault tank good for raiding obsidians good for taking a pounding and dishing it out another really good purpose for blazes is like if somebody gets a run by on you, blazes are the answer. Blazes will solve that much faster than auroras or obsidians. Uh, or you're dealing with like attacks on a bunch of different fronts and you need to be mobile. That is also true. Because auroras slow as shit. Yeah, but when they get there, they pack a punch. I mean, and, if, uh, if your punch is a ball of wet toilet paper. They have huge alpha. Aurora? Ob I said Obsidian. Oh, Obsidian. I thought you were talking about Aurora. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Aurora are what, you, are, are what you spam to sit behind the Obsidian and get consistent DPS, obviously. So you still build Aurora <laughs> at Tech 2, then? Uh, no, not really. Oh, okay. No, th that's, that's too much micro. I'm trying to get out of the T1 phase so I can avoid the Aurora. <laughs> <laughs> But so gotta, I just got to, I think I just got to T3 air and yep. Yep. Going to start building up a power generator. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? What are, what are your criticisms so far? So, I mean, I, I really think even on a map like this, uh, where there's going to be a lot of tech one being thrown your way, I still think you can get away with two tech one land factories and go for a on sniper comp. Like, Aeon Sniper Comp, stupidly good. I was actually going to do, like, a, a whole video on... Because I've, I've started playing random a lot and ended up getting Aeon. And the Sniper Comp is um, very, very strong if you have the attention sniper, span for it. Do you mean do you mean the sensor range or the range speed? Oh, range speed. Gotcha. Uh... You, you might want to try out sensor range because sensor range means that uh, I mean of course you're, you're a little bit better about having radar I don't have a radar that's that's the biggest criticism of myself right now I still don't have one I think I had one and it got killed at some point <laughs> well let's see did he have a radar is there a radar wreck you have TMD that's good I always forget TMD that's the one thing I never forget. I, I build TMD. I build too much TMD if you if you ask uh, pro level players. But I'm also paranoid. I've had too many games where I've lost to that that tactical missile launcher I didn't see. Yeah. So I mean, I think the big thing is like just not communicating right now with Zigster because like you're going full T3 air commitment right now, and he's ahead of you on that front. Yeah. Well, not like full Tech 3 air commitment, but like you're, throw you're throwing a lot into this Tech 3 power generator, which you wouldn't need if you weren't also trying to do Tech 3 air. Yeah, I I think that I should have gone for T3 maxes before yep. the T3 power generator. Oh, yeah. Tech 3 maxes, and then what have you got dotted around here? Is this you? Sam's. Oh, okay. All right. That's a lot. I, I I just build a lot of Sams when games go late because it, it's just good. Like, being able to just deny somebody their air advantage is huge. Yeah, but dude, it's 17 minutes. Like, I, that's one the, engineer. It'll take forever to do that. Also, that engineer has other things queued before it does that. Oh, okay. But I mean, like, okay, let's let's look at this. You've got, okay, first off, your, your mass is kind of trash right now. I didn't see that. Yep. But like That's you why have, I said I should have gone for T3 maxes. Yeah, you have 53, you have 52 ma mass income to go for a Tech 3 max, right? And if you have an engineer building transcenders at the same time, that almost cuts your available mass for max upgrades in half. Yeah, it does. But I'll have Sam's. You'll have you'll have Sam's. I'm, I, I I've long said that I suck at the economy of this game because I just go for too many things at once, and I know might, I do. And you might have Sam. I don't think you're gonna have Sam's. We'll see. But Zixter's got take three oh, arrows. Also, out. Uh, that that Q is up for. Let's see, which engineer even has that Q? 
Oh, well, I'm going for T3 mexes before I get those transcenders, so. And apparently I had a T2 engineer that I, I think I double clicked assist on this mechs and the engineer is trying to, the T2 engineer there got confused and started helping the mechs upgrade instead of building more mass storage, which. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's good. Now you're building two tech three mechs at the same time. They'll both get finished eventually. <laughs> at negative 161 mass income. Man, that's 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 rough. Let's just leave that up, just to look at the yeah. negative mass income. Yeah, it doesn't even bother me. I just stall every game. Well, I mean, I think everybody <laughs> stalls every game. But usually, yeah, but, like this is a Tuesday for me. This would be like a bad day for you. Well, I mean, I think that like rule, so the rule of thumb that I try and follow is I try not to stall more than like 1.25 X of my mass income. So like if I'm making a hundred mass, I try not to spend more than 125, unless there's like something that I'm really trying to like rush up and I'm begging for help. I have yeah. no idea if that's good or not. That's kind of the rule of thumb of that I've messed with. I got rid of for you. Oh, thank you so much. Sam Q. Also, I forgot a T. I forgot a T1 Max, so you can you can grill me for that one. Where? Uh, next to all the engineers and T1 engineers at the front. Nope. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> you did. In my defense, I think it upgraded and then got killed at one point. So. That happens. Do you, whenever you're upgrading your mexes, do you just zoom out, double click, upgrade all of them, and then pause all, and then use engineers to assist? Is that how you do it? Yeah, you can actually see that I've done it with all my T2 right here. I just, I thought all of my mexes were T2 already. Okay, that's what, that's what I thought you were doing. So that's, yeah. that's another way to up do it. To, up to the north, we have uh, some Titans coming in, and I believe that this fight will demonstrate what I was talking about with the Obsidian being able to kind of just it can deal with the Titan better than the Percival but it can just kind of be a stopgap until you can get something else very well oh, that's what you were talking about yeah. I mean in my in my science video on tech 2 units yeah. and how they punch above their weight like the Obsidian performed the best and just like an overall slugfest the only reason I rated the Ulshiva higher is because it has the Obsidian right. kind of has bad range. And speed compared to the Yellow. And speed, yeah. All right. Well, now I have a, I have a, I have a T3 Max. I'm about to have a second one. I'm ecoing. I'm only the second lowest eco player. Uh, yeah, that is true. Although Catawonga has had Captain Jerk in his base for pretty much the entire game. <laughs> He gave the second base over to um, AT-88. And then here's another interesting push into point defense with a, a lot yeah. of Ilshivas here to defend. So you can see that I still have two T1 factories making engineers. I think that's one thing to just like always have T1 engineers for reclaim. And I'm going to get into this field very quickly after it's over. Yeah, that is true. Um, so whether it's whether it's tech one factories that like you just didn't upgrade, like the ones that Willow has right here, um, that I think are both producing engineers, yep. Um, or like sometimes what I'll do is I'll build, I usually upgrade all my initial ones, but I'll build another one later or another two or three later just for tech one engineers. So I'll always be looking for the reclaim. Instead yes, of A, B, C, sir. always be closing. It's A, B, L, F, R. A, B, L, F, R. Abelfer. 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 Always be looking for reclaim. Yeah. It's words to live uh, by. Incredible words to live by. I Best agree. Words. I don't know why I'm building reference. a second T3 P gen. Are you building a second T3 P gen? Why? Yeah, I, I don't know why. I don't know why. In hindsight, I think I was just like, I'm going to expand the air grid now. 
I mean, you're not stalling NASA in here as badly, at least. Yeah, but I'm also getting... I'm probably about to become the highest reclaim player. Because look at the reclaim field. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you already are the highest reclaim player. Where are you at on not reclaim? Uh, you're not quite. You're tied with Zigster and a little bit behind Katawonga. Uh, yeah, in about 30 seconds, I, I think I overtake them. Oh, yeah, but your reclaim game, very strong this game. I'm definitely being nicer with you here. <laughs> no, no, I wanted you to continue to be brutal. I was going to be like, all right, let's go. Let's go, blow for blow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least you're not, like, building see, a fucking fire base or anything yet. Now, now, now we figured it out, guys. Duelist can only be a bully when you're not, when he's, when, he can't be a bully to your face. Apparently he just talks not. shit about you behind your back. That's it. <laughs> and then I publish it on the internet. <laughs> Isn't that called blogging? Real stealthy. Is that what that is? <laughs> I thought it was called TikToking. Oh, man. Everybody shits on TikTok. We don't need to keep bullying it. <laughs> well, there's no TikTok executive here, so apparently I'm in my element right now. <laughs> but Tech 3 out from your buddy towards the south. Have you started... Okay, so you are upgrading to Tech 3 land at least. I think this is a little late, but I mean, again, we've kind of beat this to death. Like, build order was pretty bad. You haven't upgraded all of your mechs to Tech 3. I, th I think if you hadn't gone oh, for well, tech well, three, well, you're gonna, you're, you're really gonna hate what's about to happen, because I what's know what's about to happen. Okay. I'll just, just keep watching that base. You'll, you'll, you'll see it eventually. Well, I see your buddy Zigster has looked over and been like, Willow has no units. I'm gonna build factories over here to help. No, he's building those to get in the reclaim field that I already scooped up. He's just building engineers out of them. Hey, maybe. What the fuck is this? <laughs> How much mass do you have? What is your income? You're at under a hundred income. Yeah, but I'm getting enough reclaim. I mean, yeah, but the reclaim field's almost done and you're not repurposing all the engineer. Oh, you're resetting rally points. That's what you're doing. Okay. At least that's, that's something. How much reclaim is here? There, there is not enough reclaim there for, for a GC. Oh, you paused it. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah, I paused it until my T3 max right there and maybe a couple others finish up because they're all passively upgrading. Okay, yeah, you got a couple that are... Oh, you're passively upgrading Tech 3 mixes. Yeah, yeah, no, this is just a mess. I mean, I don't... Uh, passively upgrading Tech 3 ma mixes, like, at least you're upgrading them, okay? Like, it's not ideal, but... Like, if you don't have the APM to do, like, engineer assist on all of them, or control K and rebuild, or, you know, whatever method you want to use, at least you're upgrading them. Like, that's, I, that's better. I, I am going to say I was drunk playing this. Like, this is actual drunk gameplay. <laughs> that's why I remember this game so well, is because I remember just saying fuck it to anything that required a lot of effort. I see that. <laughs> at least you got the shield generators here. Although, the Obsidians, once they get into range, they should just absolutely clean shop here. As long as you keep yeah. them moving. I don't know. They're going to run away. They have... The Obsidians are apparently not strong enough to beat the Pillars, because the Pillars are apparently made of Obsidian, so... I thought that uh, there were... Um Siege, siege tanks in that because he had Othams earlier. He's UEF. But there were Othams. There were Othams. Oh, wait. Those Othams were my teammates. Yeah. Well, I vividly <laughs> remember that, so I was so drunk that I thought my teammates' units were the enemy. Every Everybody <laughs> on the enemy team is UEF. And yeah, you guys have nah. no UEF. Hey, listen. I needed those har the Harbingers and the Sniper Bots to fight this. Uh, that's true. Yeah, you got, uh, two, oh, I mix up the, the Harbs and the Sniper Bots look very similar close up. At least I and One think. has a personal shield. Well, yeah, but they were both under your mobile shield. But either way, Monkey Lord now coming in from Zigster, uh, who apparently has realized your inebriated state and said, I need to help <laughs> this guy out. 
either that or he was like, this guy's a caster. He's going to, like, drag me up one mountain and down another if I don't help him. But Monkey Lord is going to absolutely wreck this Tech 2 so army. So there, there is a naval play here, and you can see how useful the investment's been. Enemy team went heavy for naval. Yeah, they did. You also did, way far behind on mass. And that's with my eco. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, my eco's kind of getting respectable now. I'm up to almost, I think, 200. Uh, you are at 192, 186. So, yeah, with reclaim, yeah, right about 200. I remember whenever I got an 85 in school, I just went to the professor and was like, hey, can you round that up to 100, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 See? Listen, you miss every shot you don't take, so that's a shot you gotta take, right? That is true. You got a whole coalition here, too, that are about to march into a wall of triads and percivals. I... It's okay, I'll I'll get the reclaim anyways. I actually don't know who who's gonna win this one, because you all do have a monkey, but it's pretty badly damaged, and there are a few percivals and a lot of triads. There's also still a lot of obsidians. That's true. And some siege tanks to help. And yeah, you got an odd harp here and there. Sniper bots in the back. That is going to be interesting. And before anybody goes down in the comments like, oh, look at what Duelist is missing. No, I completely see this push over here on the west side. It's not Willow, so I'm not paying attention to it. Except for to tell you guys I'm not paying attention to it. <laughs> so you are paying attention to it. Well, I just like it's the mini map, dude. I'm always looking at the mini map. <laughs> I, it's one of my flaws. I barely do. Oh, now I'm building an SMD for some reason. Uh, yeah. There's, there's no, no nuke. nuke. I'm just paranoid, man. Are you a paranoid drunk? Uh, I'm just paranoid in general. You're just paranoid in general. Okay. They call it paranoia until you're right. Did Alex Jones say that? I have no idea. It's just something I thought of. It just sounds like a conspiracy theorist thing. Either way, though, the uh, um, push was rebuffed by the line of triads, but they did pay a pretty heavy price, but uh, I believe they will also control a lot of the reclaim. While there's a little bit of a lull here, I might as well indulge everybody who's been screaming at me right now to go and pay attention to the other side. Yeah, Katawunga is going to die here. He's getting absolutely pelted by bricks. All right, he's dead. Push is going to be successful. There you go. Let's go back to Willow now. Why the hell are you going for a RAS upgrade? Because uh, I haven't been yelled at enough to build mass fabs. I haven't been yelled at enough. And also, this was two months ago. But... I'm, I'm kind of speechless right, <laughs> right now. I, I didn't actually learn about the efficiency of mass fabs until like a month ago. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I thought mass boys were better. No. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> so, they're better. They're better in like some ways as far as like straight efficiency. No, not at all. But like they can move like they so can go underwater. I, they can going, keep themselves safe. I'm going to defend my avid use of mass boys. As uh, j just, j this is just me defending myself. Almost every time I get a bunch of Rass boys, I sacrifice GC, and that wins me the game way more often than it doesn't. Put, put five Rass SUs onto a transport, get them really close to the enemy base or behind it, and sacrifice a GC. It's really good. Yeah, I mean. Or just build a GC. <laughs> no, because the, the GC, they can scout it. It'll show up. Like, it doesn't just pop up out of the middle of nowhere. It's a sneaky, stealthy tactic because people don't remember that it, it just takes five RAS SUs anywhere on the map. Yeah, I did forget that in my science video. Or I messed up on that test. 
Oh yeah, you did like you had like twenty three to build a GC or something like that because you used. Uh, I think uh, it was twelve. It, it was twelve. I did the preset wrong whenever I was testing it. You have to build it as the preset because if you get the upgrades after yeah. the fact, it doesn't count. Yeah. Which is what I did. Yeah. So, whoops. <laughs> All good. I still think it's a Mimi play that doesn't really like. I mean, I don't think it's. I still don't think it's a very legitimate like. I have used it to win maneuver more games than I should have. In the end of the Lost Archipelago game, I killed them with double sacrifice GC, and you missed it. I saw it. I was busy ranting about something else. No, you said you said that they got killed by. Uh, you thought they got killed by like Navy or something. No, no, no. I definitely saw it. <laughs> I will not. I will not concede this point. No. Um, anyway, nuke out from Zigster. Yeah, I did miss that. Um, but nuke out from Zigster. Gonna level what used to be uh, Nabravasser's base. Uh, your GC is now pushing up through the middle. With a um, bunch of sniper bots being microed very well. The GC not so much, but the sniper bots—they're oh. doing their job well. I thought you were being sarcastic, and I was like, no, nah, I mean, they're not doing too bad. Like, Oh, no, no, I, I'm actually decent at sniper bot micro because I really like microing sniper bots. Dude, I, I love the update that they gave to the GC's grab hands. Oh, yeah, no, um, it's it's Thurnus's new go-to. If I'm in a match with him and we hit T3 and he's like, I want experimentals, he's like, give me Aeon. Because yeah. the GC is so much better now with the tractor beams working. I don't know what was wrong with them for the longest time, but it was like they'd only scoop like one unit and then it's like, all right, I'm done now. Um, now. So the issue with them was um, they would they would grab a unit, it would go on cooldown, and then it would stay on cooldown for random periods of time. Sometimes you'd have a GC that would just constantly pick up units and then other times you'd have a GC that picks up one with one arm and won't pick up anymore until it's out of combat. Yeah, dude, now it's like hungry, hungry hippos on that fucking boy's arms. Yeah. When I first heard of the update, they're like, we're going to fix it. I'm like, hey, and we're also going to nerf it. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I realize now why they nerfed it, because if it was like its original fire rate, it would actually just be broken. What was like, its original it fire rate? Its original fire rate is like once every like two seconds or something for each arm. Oh wow! Like basically, it was it, it would pick up it, it would all almost always have a unit in the air. Wow! I don't know. That might not be right, but I I remember they did say they were like we're nerfing its fire rate when they said they fixed it. I was like because they can't make it work the way it was intended, and then I realize now that like. Yeah, they needed to do that. <laughs> yeah, that is that is uh, pretty broken. But at at eight's gonna go down, and I think that mighty Gorgon uh, turned out to be not so mighty, and uh, he is gonna bow out as well. And that is it for the replay. So drunk Willow didn't do too bad this game. Uh, I mean, outside of like you know building tech three air and you for some reason built an air grid like well done i guess uh not upgrading your mexes you never had a radar did you ever build a radar nah who needs it yep didn't build a radar you tried to start a gc on 90 something eco you overbuilt power you built an smd for a nuke that doesn't exist and i think that's it am i missing anything <laughs> yeah i i think i think the answer here is i just need to focus Maybe just a little bit. The ADHD was strong in this, and and in all of them, it's been strong. I, I just I get all these ideas, and I'm like, yeah, that sounds good, and I do them all at once, and I can't afford it pretty much ever. <laughs> it's just I got I got to start focusing on one thing and one thing at a time. I'll probably be this, a much better player. Yeah, and this game is terrible about that because it'll let you do. Like, it'll let you do everything yeah. at the same time and reap the yeah. consequences. <laughs> yeah, the consequences is I stalled for a long time and then fixed it with Reclaim. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, uh, Reclaim is something that I think you did really, really well on. The stats aren't up on the screen anymore. Can I see the scoreboard from a replay? No, I cannot. 
Uh, no, you can't. Well, actually, you can. Uh, hit and replay, and it'll take you to scoreboard. I don't know if it'll show you reclaimed mass, though. I think it didn't it used to, or maybe it didn't. No, it didn't. It, it'll show you mass collected, which I'm going to be very low on. Um, the last time I looked, I was at the top and I was at 45, maybe 50,000. That's pretty good. Which is like, what, one eighth of my overall economy this game? Yeah, that's damn good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I was very, I do vividly remember being very focused on reclaim. And I think that's the only reason I didn't do absolutely horribly this game. Yeah, that was probably your saving but, uh, grace. But yeah, thank you for having me on. Uh, thank you to everybody for watching. And um, I hope to do more co-cast with Duelist. Uh, unfortunately, schedules aren't working out right now. But A, uh, go make sure you subscribe to his channel if you are coming here from my Discord. And uh, yeah. Appreciate it. And likewise, uh, we've actually got a cast that we're going to do right after this for your channel. So yeah, if you guys want to see more of me and Willow doing stupid shit together, then go check out the one that's going to be on his channel. If you're not subscribed, do it already. It's free. That's a, Willow's favorite thing to say. And uh, yeah, helps uh, yeah, helps recommend uh, the algorithm for smaller streamers and content creators like us. So I really appreciate it. But with that, guys, thank you guys so much. I will see y'all in the next one. Peace. Podcast coming in.